ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Live from Saturn. I am Duncan Gale, uh, and my cat is currently out of the cradle. Uh, Co- uh, who's the guy that did the Cats in the Cradle song? Uh, I don't... Cody, that guy yeah. who made the song Decker. Okay, good. <laughs> uh. All right, so... Today we are going to be covering Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Um, so, okay. Um, yeah, where this, do you start with this? Yeah, where do you start? Well, I mean, I'll start with just sort of with my own background with uh, Kurt Vonnegut. So, yeah, you know, I, um, I first read this novel um, a long time ago uh, when I was in uh, middle school. It was my first... Uh, exposure to uh Kurt Vonnegut and it really um really blew my mind uh at the time um and um yeah so a little bit of background about uh Kurt Vonnegut I mean if you know who he is um yeah he's really one of the most important I think um American writers of the of the 20th century, uh, yeah, born in 1922 in uh, Indiana, um, wrote uh, wrote many novels. Um, yeah, worked at uh, General Electric, uh, served in served in World War II, and all of all of his uh, life experiences they um, they really um, affect a lot of the stuff that he that he wrote about um but yeah i mean cat's cradle is is one of his well-known novels probably his most well-known is this novel called slaughterhouse five um yeah but a lot of other great ones uh breakfast of champions is a is a great one um yeah uh mother night sirens of titan um yeah there's there's the 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 hits just keep coming with (laughs) with kurt vonnegut in my in my opinion um and some of his novels are uh, science fiction, some not so much. So he's he's one of these writers that has become so respectable, quote unquote, that uh, all of his books are just in the regular fiction section at most bookstores, even if some of them are technically science fiction. But um, yeah, and his uh, yeah his style is very uh, very unique. I think. Um, I mean, it's. Yeah, even if there are science fiction elements in his books, it's not sort of um, overtly science fiction necessarily. I mean, this I mean this book is sort of like really, really I would classify it as maybe only like twenty to thirty percent science fiction. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mm-hmm. knowing I didn't know who this guy was. Yeah. I yeah. often mm-hmm. jump into books without reading synopsises or anything. Mm-hmm. I thought mm-hmm. this was his autobiography. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it does. It does have that kind of feeling to it. I yeah. thought, mm-hmm. um, oh, it's, and then like, and then I'm like, oh, it's like a humorous autobiography. Like, right. I don't think that happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I'm like, oh, I'm reading like classic literature. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, is that? Yeah, Kurt Vonnegut. I mean, he was a formative influence in my life. Yeah, just at just a young age. Um, you know, he was kind of like this, this like cool uncle. Who came along and was like, "Hey, you know, you know how you kind of think there's something wrong with with the world and everything." Yeah, you're right. Um, and uh, yeah, and he was really sort of the first one of the first writers I that, that I read where I was like, "Oh yeah, this is just like really fun and entertaining to read." And then I also find out, "Oh, these are also like important works of literature." Oh, oh, okay. Well, then, well, good. Yeah, that's that's like a bonus. I mean, it's it's really the first quote unquote important literature that I encountered that I was like, oh well yeah, but this is like not at all an effort to read. It's not it doesn't feel like homework. It doesn't feel like, you know, a school assignment. It's just it's just fun. Which you know? if we're being honest, when I by the time I found out what the book is I'm I'm an audiobook guy. So yeah. I'm listening to mm-hmm. it. And I'm like, oh, I got tricked into listening to f- smart stuff. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, maybe I'm going to have to play this faster. I'm actually like, no, actually, I'm, this is going by very fast. And I'm like, oh, I don't mind this at all. This is actually, I'm like, no, oh, that was neat. Mm-hmm. I'm like learning. And I'm like, that was funny. I'm like, yeah. okay. I'm yeah. like, this, I was like, that was a very nice, very easy listen. The audiobook also includes an interview with him. And oh, cool. The oh, way okay. he talks, yeah. he was like, uh-huh. oh, yeah. So I was, uh, he's like talking with his friend. He's like, tell him about your uh, your POW. He's like, oh, yeah, I was like a POW uh, yep. in Germany. He's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, not that great, but you know, he's like very like casual. Like I'm like, oh my god, this is horrible. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That it that it happened to him. Right. And then it's just like, he's, but he's just like, yeah, that happened. It was like that kind of inspired this for me to write mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, this one, like that. This guy seems pretty cool. Yeah. What's Slaughterhouse Five about? Because that sounds the most. Yeah, yeah. So catching. Um, yeah, um, 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 Slaughterhouse Five is the book where he deals most directly with his experiences in World War II. It's about, yeah, because he was a he was a witness to the to the firebombing of Dresden, the the German city, and uh, yeah. And so Slaughterhouse Five, there's a scene, yeah, that takes place then, and the the main character of that, yeah, is a yeah, is a character who goes goes to World War II, but but he also. Uh, gets kidnapped by aliens at one point. So, 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 Slaughterhouse Five is actually also a, a science fiction novel, although it also has real stuff that happened okay. in World War Two as well. So, it's it's totally insane. Yeah. Is that a movie? Did that get a movie adaptation? Yeah, yeah, it, it was made into a movie back in back in the seventies. How I think, do you feel yeah. about it? I yeah, I thought that the movie was okay. Yeah, there have been a couple of adaptations of uh, Kurt Vonnegut's uh, work, ne- never never of Cat's Cradle, but of other stuff. Uh, yeah, and I think the best adaptations were, yeah yeah that version of uh, Slaughterhouse Five, and then there was also an adaptation of his novel Mother Night that came out in the '90s that I th- that I thought was pretty good. Um, yeah, but. Uh, but, but another of my favorite novels of his, Breakfast of Champions, was also made into a movie that I thought was a terrible movie. So, oh, okay. you know, it's hit and miss. Two, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, lim- yeah. yeah, I mean, a- adding one adaption that's like you like is a win. Right, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slaughter mm-hmm. I'm like, that sounds familiar. In my head, I'm like, oh, did Quentin Tarantino make that? Well, that sounds like <laughs> something he would have... Yeah, he would, he would have loved. He probably was steaming when he found out that's already a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That that does. Yeah. It is a Tarantino esque title. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, cause this was. I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty an easy listen, but I do need to like pay attention. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what what is the, like a short little summary of what happened here for people? Yeah. Okay. So a short summary. So we have a uh, we have a main character, a narrator who. I'm, I, I was almost tempted to say he's an unnamed narrator, but no, actually, on the very first page, he says his name is John, or wait, wait, he actually says, call me Jonah, well, actually, my name is John, but that's, that's the only time there's ever a reference to his own name. Throughout the rest of the book, nobody ever calls him by his name, uh, he never refers to his own name, uh, but, so that's, that's the main character, and he's a writer, and uh, at the beginning of the uh, book, he is trying to write a book um, about the day that the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and he um, wants to interview um, the family of the guy that created the atomic bomb, and uh, the guy that created the atomic bomb is Dr. Honecker. Now, that's not that's not a real person, uh, the real guy that... Uh, is considered the father of the atomic bomb is uh, Oppenheimer, but uh, this is a fictionalized version of that. So, so this this guy, Doctor Honecker, and so this guy contacts a number of family members of, of Doctor Honecker, and then he travels to where where he lived, um, and goes to the lab where where Doctor Honecker worked, and, and and it's basically so. So yeah, the first part of the book is just him sort of investigating this guy that. Um, the creator of the atomic bomb and sort of trying to look at the human element of it. What was his family like? What were, what are his kids like? And, and you, and you meet uh, his kids, you, you hear about his kids and his family life. And there's a lot of stuff about how, um, scientists are, um, we, 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 yeah, yeah, this guy in particular is a scientist who was really sort of uh, your typical kind of absent-minded scientist. Like he he didn't know how to interact with human beings. He was just uh, just all about working in his lab and thinking about things, and he didn't really care about uh, you know how his work was used. Or um, and, and so there's some yeah, I I, uh-huh. I really like that where he's like he just wants to play with things. Right, right. And so mm-hmm. they just put him in a nuclear lab, and he just mm-hmm. started playing with it. And he does, right. yeah. It's like what happens with it doesn't matter. And there's like a parallel. I think 
if I'm right, there's a parallel mm-hmm. between his inventions and his children. As far as like, I don't really care what happens with it. Right. He, the, he's not mm-hmm. mean spirited. Right. He's not, and and that is like the no. the thing yeah. with like mm-hmm. you know, which is like, oh, the nuclear bomb mm-hmm. is just a result of people, you know, and they're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then like, because you see another guy be like, oh, how could we solve this issue? And they're like, oh, what if we had a chemical that could like freeze mud? Right. And they're like, and it, and it can do this, and like, does that exist? He's like, no, but like that's how we could. So, and it's just right, like, right, right. And it's just mm-hmm. like people just give him problems, and he solves them. He doesn't care. He just wants to solve problems. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's basically the the first part of the of the book. And yeah, yeah. So what you just mentioned is an important part as well. Where yeah, uh, yeah. At one point when this guy is interviewing a guy that worked with the doctor, yeah, he he talks about how yeah the Marines came to the came to the doctor at one point and um, asked, okay, we need to we need to deal with this issue of mud. Like the soldiers get caught in the mud. And what's a way to deal with that? And so he says, well, yeah, I mean, you could you could create a chemical that could just turn the mud into into ice. Basically, it could just just freeze the mud, and then they could easily uh, um, get out of it. And and so it's it, so it's this seemingly completely theoretical thing called ice nine, which has a different different um, chemical composition than regular ice. It it uh, has a higher um, Boiling uh, or uh, yeah, 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 high, a higher melting point than than regular ice, yeah, and so, it, but and and it's presented as something completely theoretical, but it turns out the guy actually did create <laughs> it, um, and that that comes back later on. So so yeah, that's basically the first part of the book, and then basically the guy loses interest in writing this book about the atomic bomb, and then he gets another <laughs> assignment to go down to this uh, tropical. Uh, Republic called San Lorenzo, which is somewhere near Puerto Rico, Cuba, in that in that area in the uh, Caribbean, um, and uh, yeah, so he so he goes down there, and he and it turns out that one of the one of the children of the atomic bomb guy is a high-ranking member of the government there. And he and he meets the other kids on on the plane ride down there, and so that all sort of comes back, and and so basically this guy goes down to this Republic of San Lorenzo, where there's this dictator there, and there's also this religion, uh, Baconan, yeah, Baconanism, and this religion is a is is something that comes up throughout the novel. He uh, and like like he basically the the narrator. Uh, initially says, yeah, this uh, th- this is all about uh, how I became a uh, Bokonanist, and and you know, and 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 he makes frequent fr- frequent references to like, well, yeah, I didn't know at the time what this was, but there is this Bokonanist concept of this that explains why this happened, and so Bokonanism is basically this religion where it's like, uh, you know, uh, the 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 founder basically says. Everything is everything is lies, but we need lies to to sort of comfort ourselves and to make it seem like our lives have meaning, and we're all um, in these teams of people together called carasses, and the teams work together to uh, exercise God's will on earth. And there's there's all of these recurring themes about yeah, um, he meets people who are parts of his carass. But then there's this other uh, concept of something called a false caress, which is uh, something that people think is like a meaningful connection that people have between each other, but 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 actually isn't. And the the uh, main example of that is he meets a woman on the airplane who was also from Indiana, and he's like, "Oh, you're a, you're a, you're a Hoosier just like me." And hey, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of great people who have been from Indiana who have been Hoosiers. And he says, "Yeah, the, you know, thinking that being from Indiana, uh, there's a connection between people that way. That's a classic example of a false caress. Just it's not, it's not a real connection between people. It's just a manufactured one." Yeah. I do like one of the points of this part is to like get people to like understand and like know about books a little more. Yeah. Sometimes I'm going through a book and I'm like, I cannot wait for Duncan to explain to me what actually happened. <laughs> sometimes, because <laughs> sometimes, like reading this, I'm like, there's a lot of stuff I'm missing out on in this book, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so I'm, I'm just like, oh, okay, all right. So that is what. Okay. <laughs> just <laughs> well, it's yeah. I mean, and it's interesting because a lot of the stuff in this book 
feels like this is a reference to like something, but in most cases it's not. I mean, it's, it's all, it's all stuff made up for the purposes mm. of this book. Uh, uh, it does. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so this is, uh, you know, Dunbar's number. And I think that's relevant to the cravats thing. You know Dunbar's numbers? Dunbar's numbers? No. no. Um, they found that there's a limit to how many people you can have sympathy for. Mm. Oh, okay. And they can tell yeah. by the size mm-hmm. of your neofrontal cortex, and it's about 150. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. And that's what they noticed that, like, and so that's why people usually go, like, you know, there's two types of people. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, you like the, you know, the, who plays, uh, um, oh, uh, uh, no, uh, the greenbacks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you like the greenbacks? We're in the same team, and it's like, right. and then it's like, it's easy for your brain to be like, "Well, I like those people. Right, like, who right, are right. you? You're the Miami Dolphins. I don't like you guys. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. so that's they're mm-hmm. cravats. Caras, yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> Cravat is a, uh, it's a kind of tie, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I like the book, and I yeah. I, I did mm-hmm. I did cause, like listening to it, and they were like, "Oh, Baconism says this." I'm like, "That's that is like mm-hmm. it, it is a book where like you're kind of like getting philosophy in a fun way, right?" Which I think is your jam completely. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm all about it. Yeah, yeah, and there, I also do like that. There's people like you can put that in your book if you want. Uh, that's right. like that like pops up constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So that that's what this book is about. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's pretty com- pretty short, not a hard read or no. listen to, um, and it covers a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, and it's like for being such an influential writer. Yeah, I think I think this is a neat way, especially if people are like, I want to get into like more. You know, it's like, look, I like wizards, but I can't be watching them. Mm-hmm. Can the guy be the chosen one all the time. That's this is a neat. I think this is a neat little like mm-hmm. way to start getting into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in terms of the style of it, yeah. I mean, it's very, it's very sort of uh, breezy. I mean, uh, yeah. The there's almost one chapter per page uh, in the oh, in, yeah, in, 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 in the book. Yeah, on Audible, I just see that there's like seventy four chapters. Like, oh, boy, right, right, right. Of, oh, they're ten minutes each. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's it's um, it's almost like each chapter is just like some sort of like little vignette that ends with some sort of like punchline or mm-hmm. something. And so, and so that sort of style of it, it's, it's very easy to just sort of like keep sort of reading it because there's, there's either like a sort of minor cliffhanger or, or, or something that there's a, there's a payoff very, very, very uh, frequently throughout. So yeah. You get sensible mm-hmm. chuckles out of this a lot. Which, yeah. yeah I've yeah. just been like, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. That was, that was solid. Yeah. Like Ice Nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of, th- I, yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of a connection between like Kurt Vonnegut and like uh, Douglas Adams a little bit. Like they're both sort of like humorous science fiction. I mean, Kurt Vonnegut's sort of like the the American Midwestern version of that, whereas Douglas Adams is more the, sort of like the the cynical British, <laughs> you know, version of it. I, yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, and there's there's a certain amount of, I guess, cynicism in Vonnegut, but it it seems like he has a sort of overall hope for humanity is there that, is there yeah. a word for light-hearted cynicism yeah um baconanism yeah baconanism yeah but but yeah 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 i think yeah yeah light-hearted cynicism is uh is a good way to to put it yeah yeah mm-hmm. and uh if I, one of the characters if not the main character he's mm-hmm. a he's a little person i don't know what the yeah, yeah. One of the uh, one of the children of the of the atomic bomb scientists. Yeah, uh, uh, Newt uh, her, her, uh, Newt Honecker. Uh, yeah, is a is a, a little person. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And the way that that's talked about, um, as well as the way that um, some uh, characters of different races are talked about, is. A little outdated. Uh, this book was written in 1963. Well, that's but, the thing. They're yeah. literally mm-hmm. outdated. Like, at the that's time, true. those yeah, were yeah, just yeah. the words you used. That's right. It's, yeah, so, yeah. It's, yeah mm-hmm. So, it, it, that's like that thing where you have to be like, what time was... Oh, yeah. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't like... Uh, it was just no, like, that, yeah. those are the words that you used... Right. Until we were like, we need different words. Now. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, you know, that's just one word of warning. Yeah, if you if you start reading this book, it's like the, there are a couple of words that are used. It's like, oh, that's... A little weird. We don't, we don't use that word anymore. But it's not, but it wasn't a 
the wrong word to use at the time that he was writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the part that got me to be like, mm. okay, was when he, the guy knew, I think he's talking about his dad and his dad was like sent home from work. Right. And he's just mm-hmm. like playing with string. Right. Right. And uh-huh. he's just like, he's just like, look, it's the cat's cradle. Right. And he's like, don't you want to? And then, and then he starts singing to the boy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that, uh, that rockabye baby song, but it's about uh-huh. a cat. Right. And right. then he, the boy writes, and he says like, and I started crying mm-hmm. because my dad was the ugliest man I had ever, <laughs> yeah. the ugliest thing I had ever seen. I couldn't stop right, crying. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to have fun with this. Yeah. Yeah. I also still thought that was biography at that point. I'm like, <laughs> he's describing how like hair is coming out of his nose. And right. Ears, right. And, that's like that. That I think that's a good introduction to the story. It's just like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's pretty silly. That's like yeah. fun, silly, not like wrong, silly. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. This 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 scientist guy. Yeah, he yeah, even when he tries to relate to his kids, it's yeah. He does it in such an awkward way, and it's it's so out of the blue that yeah, he ends up frightening yeah his kid when he tries to do it. Yeah, and so his kid goes off running and crying, and then his sister slaps him for for doing that and yeah so it's i mean it's yeah, it's definitely a definitely a dysfunctional family uh, yeah he's, she's ones. like why are you crying he's like he's so ugly she's yeah, like, you yeah. know slaps like don't say that about him <laughs> and i did like the moment where he's like i don't know blame her for that and that's why right, i kept right. thinking like is this real because this mm-hmm. feels like very like human writing yeah that's yeah. part of why mm-hmm. i couldn't tell if it was a joke or not sure um yeah, yeah. and then he, mm-hmm. you know he's like i don't hold it against her she, you know she he's all she had you know all that and then like his friend goes and punches the sister and now they're both crying on the ground and the dad did you watch i think you should leave oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. and there's a bit where the guy there's a guy driving like don't you know how to drive and you see yeah. the guy like look out the window like and he's like no, oh yeah that is how i because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they say like <laughs> that should be, i'll put that here because he's like he's like his dad like looked out the window saw them crying and just went like and then, like, just close the window. And he's like, that's yeah, the kind yeah. of man he was. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, can we get more into the plot now and do some spoilers? We'll just or? have a full open conversation. Okay. Yeah, Before yeah. you guys go, while you guys are racing to the library, mm-hmm. I'll read a couple comments. Um, this was on the At the Mountain of Ma- I'll start saying the episodes. Yeah. At the Mountain mm-hmm. of Madness episode by Alf the True Lord. I've always been unsure where to start with Lovecraft. Probably best to go in story release order, but maybe I'm wrong. The, the first story is very Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Twilight mm-hmm. Zone. Mm-hmm. It's very short. It's the, these guys go into a cave and one guy just doesn't come out. It is spooky because there's like mm-hmm. one word set at the end. Um, you can. It depends on what genre you like. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean... Shadow of Innsmouth, I think, is like honestly by probably one of the better ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you didn't, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're really setting out to like read all of H.P. Lovecraft's writings, I mean, first off, God bless you. <laughs> uh, and 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 I mean, and you know, I I mean, I speak from personal experience. I mean, it's hard to do that even with a writer that you like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because a lot of times, I, I mean, I mean, actually, Kurt Vonnegut is is the closest I've come to that. I yeah, I think I read like his first seven novels and he's probably the writer i've read the most novels of all all by him but um but yeah it can be it can be a real a real drag uh sometimes because you know even even great writers and and i mean i've yeah i tried to do this with uh, dostoevsky as well who some people think is a great writer uh you know not not everything he wrote was great (laughs) so you know yeah, with Lovecraft, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, at the at the Mountains of Madness, I think that's a it's probably a fine place to start. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I'll say, and I found out the name of the the Dream Quest one. That's like the most like fantasy, like fun adventure story is called Unknown Quest of Kadath. And that's the one where it's like, any you know, this guy like, and he meets, and it's kind of what like Bloodborne. I don't know if you played that game. Mm-mm-mm. Well, yeah, the, it's the idea is like, you know, elder gods are like untouchable, but in the dreamlands, we're kind of more on even footing. Mm-hmm. And so like you have a guy like in the dreamlands dealing and he like you'll occasionally see like elder gods. But it's like it's not as like it is like scary, but it's more in the sense of like, you know, those Nazgul's chasing you way. 
Because, like, in the Dreamlands, you know, anything can go. Mm -hmm. So check Mm -hmm. that one out if you like more just, like, fantasy. Cool. And this could not be more appropriate, considering that Bulls01 does the thumbnails um, from the Weepsty Boys. says, 420 subs. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) I saw that. (laughs) That's funny. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, which does remind me, yeah, you know, comment and we read them. Go on the Discord. I'm on there all the time. Duncan is informed of the stuff happening there. He's got like a job mm-hmm. and like a relationship, and, I, <laughs> and I'm I'm like a, I'm more of a gamer type guy, so I will be on there. Yeah, and you know, as as nice as it is to have 420, you know, if any if 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 anybody else wants to subscribe and you're worried about messing up that number, that's that's okay, you know, yeah. We had the moment. We celebrated right. it. We celebrated it, but we can we can move on. We can we can have more than that. Now. Don't yeah. think this bars you from subscribing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if the likes are at sixty nine, you can stop that though. Okay. <laughs> and let's we're gonna have a full on talk about Cat's Cradle. Yeah. And the Silver Spoon. That's right. I think they do mention Little Boy Blue in this. I don't. I don't remember that specifically, but uh, I may have yeah. been listening to mm-hmm. Yellow. Actually. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I may have. All I right. may have just right. heard that while I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if. I mean. I. Yeah. I think that song came out after this book, so so I don't think this book is referencing that song specifically. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, but. Yeah. Anyway, but. Well, so he was, but, 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 but that song but, is a reference to Kurt Vonnegut. Well, no, I'm not sure if the song is a reference to the to the book either, but but the book is not referencing the song. Um, but the book does detail a distant relationship between a father and his children. Mm. So I guess I guess there's a slight thematic connection there. Were yeah. they born with silver spoons in their mouth? Um, that I don't know. Um, all I know well, about all I know about silver spoons is from the Ricky Schroeder uh, '80s sitcom. But yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, okay. but see, because here's the thing. There is a little boy in this, so little boy blue. It's true. So it almost there's almost a, a big conspiracy we're unraveling. I'm sorry. Let's just talk about the book. <laughs> we'll just talk about the book. <laughs> I'm sorry for wasting your time. I thought something right. was going to happen. It's all right. No, we try. We, we tried to make a connection. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you dig and you're like, oh, this there's nothing here. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, well, yeah. So I yeah. I mean, I guess where, where we sort of left off with the plot summary. Yeah, I mean the. I guess the main sort of uh, meat of the plot happens once he once he gets on the plane to go to San Lorenzo and uh, and then he gets there and and he meets the meets the dictator and um, yeah and he basically sort of gets involved in the politics of this this country that. Um, is basically a country that like nobody wants like like basically all of these different European powers like claim the country in their in their name and whatever whatever power had claimed it beforehand was like yeah fine <laughs> you know so 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 that's that, that's part of the sort of dynamics of this this is like a country that has no sort of um, r- truly valuable like resources or exports or anything um, and it's a very sort of impoverished country um, and um, the main character also falls madly in love with the adopted daughter of the uh, of the uh, 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 dictator of the country, um, and that was something that reading this again after after having read it the first time, it, it, it's it struck me a lot more like this guy is just very naive uh, that he just like sees this picture of this woman and this uh, yeah yeah he first learns about the country in this in, in the newspaper and he sees this picture of her and he's just like oh and i just i just knew that i love this woman and and it's like yeah uh you start to sort of question the uh i guess overall intelligence of the narrator with stuff like that but yeah, yeah. That, that is one yeah what, what's there's a term for it based on don quixote i forgot the name of the yeah well yeah yeah it's very similar to yeah yeah don quixote with uh dulcinea yeah yeah, yeah no it's very i keep thinking of uh-huh. like de leche like the <laughs> dulcinea de leche yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that i mean because you know don quixote the point is he's like being dumb but because it, it's making fun of like romance novels exactly yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah there's an element of like because i was like you watch it like i'm not like rooting 
for you to get you just saw the picture right right so yeah mm-hmm. so it's a good bit in comedy yeah they, yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is a good, good connection. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this character is a little bit like, like Don Quixote, in that, in that sense. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So, yeah. I mean, basically, he goes down to San Lorenzo and he, uh, and he meets with, um, yeah, the the dictator and the the children of the of the atomic scientist. And basically, yeah, yeah. The oldest, uh, the oldest son who is going to take over being the dictator. And and marry uh, this woman. Um, he actually doesn't want to do it, and so he offers it to the narrator. And the narrator is like, "Okay, great, great, yeah." I, I mean, I mean, at first the narrator doesn't want to do it, but then he, when he says, "Well, yeah, you know, you get to marry this this woman," he's like, "Oh, oh, yeah." Oh yeah, uh, that was another uh-huh. fun bit. Yeah, yeah, that that, mm-hmm. that that's when she's you know he's like laying down the rules of marriage. Right, right. And he's like, and mm-hmm. you, we can't be with anyone else. And she's like, right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah. Once once he agrees to become dictator and to and to marry her, um, that he he meets her and and um, and then they they touch they touch each other's feet. Mm-hmm. And this is a uh, this is a sacred. Um, ritual within bocanonism uh this is basically like you know it, uh, the, the most intimate act that you can have with another person is if you if you uh you, you take off your shoes and socks and you uh, put your bare the, the bottoms of your bare feet to their to their bare feet it's a it's a like communing for some um, people that's still true yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm sure you know if that's if that's what you're into, that's 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 fine. Yeah, it's also yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's, you're connecting your souls. All right. So uh, <laughs> I'm not really a philosophy guy. <laughs> it's good. No, that's uh, good. No, no, that one totally. I I, I missed that one. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, yeah. Good. So good. Yeah. They, they they touch feet and they're like. This yeah. Is. They touch feet and and that's how they sort of get to know each other and then, um, yeah. And the, and then the narrator is like, okay, well, yeah. Um, now that we're gonna get married, you can't touch feet with anybody else anymore. And she's like, what? <laughs> no, that's that's not. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I I, I don't want to agree to that. And 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 then um, the narrator is like, well, yeah, I don't actually. I don't actually have any religion of my own, uh, and she's like, "Well, yeah, you can have my religion then," uh, and 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 then that's sort of how how that conflict is resolved. Like like yeah she, yeah, it almost they almost don't get married uh, because of that, or, or or you know, I mean, she she almost is completely repulsed by him, but then it turns out he just doesn't know the ways of bacchanalism, and then yeah yeah he so. can he converts for her yeah he converts so. Yeah. So yeah, so that happens, and and so basically, there's going to be a ceremony um, where uh, they're going to commemorate um, all of these people on San Lorenzo who who died uh, for for the Americans in World War II, um, and then he's going to be named the president. Um, but before that happens, uh, yeah, when there there are these planes that are flying by to do a to do like a show and one of the planes crashes into the um to the presidential palace and it turns out that the the old president of uh of san lorenzo took some ice nine he he had some ice nine uh and he took it to to kill himself um but but i mean he was he was ill anyway um he takes a chill pill yeah he takes a chill pill that's this is all I'm gonna be able to provide. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> I like it. No, no. I'm, like, I'm just gonna heckle good. you. I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he. T- he yeah, mm-hmm. um, I'm surprised that's not the Ice Nine isn't referenced more in in things. Considering mm-hmm. how many people like Mister Free, do you think he would like? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. I. I mean, it is referenced in in, in some places, but but yeah. Um, so so yeah basically the the uh the dead body of the of the former president who who is covered in ice nine like like falls out of the palace and falls into the ocean and so basically like whenever ice nine touches any other water like everything just like freezes and so basically once that happens like like i mean so so this turns into basically being a sort of you know apocalyptic novel where basically 
uh, the entire world world supply of water <laughs> freezes. That uh, caught me uh, completely off guard because yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's like a human. Like, oh, that's like bad. That's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm-hmm. like gonna that's gonna ruin the world, won't it? Right, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's that's mm-hmm. not if you watch the whitest kids, you know when he, there's like a guy there's a <laughs> when he like pours like Kool Aid powder into the ocean. Uh huh. And he's like laughing, and then the whole the whole ocean becomes red Kool Aid. <laughs> That's great. That's, That's funny. <laughs> That's what happens with ice mine. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So basically, you know, the end of the book is just, um, yeah, sort of people trying to survive in a world where uh, where the water supply uh, it doesn't really. It, well, it turns out that they are able to still get water, but they have to like boil it and 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 like uh yeah get water from the from, from the ice nine that way and they talk about how ants do it i thought that was that, that's a little later that's like near the end but. yeah yeah uh yeah the one guy ha- has an ant farm and yeah and the the ants are like the only surviving insects like 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 all of the insects died like yeah like all life on earth like, <laughs> like dies yeah. uh, for the yeah. most part yeah. like it, it was just like oh it's like the world oh it's like actually ending yeah 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 it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe not when I say it out loud, but yeah. It's right. Funny. Well, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and this is, yeah, this is one of like Vonnegut's signature sort of things is like, yeah, sort of like funny apocalypse. Uh, Which is a guy, <laughs> he yeah, like yeah. turns he turns into ice and then falls into the ocean and then it like it just freezes the whole. Right, right. That's a, that's a very fun visual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, the ants, they like. They like a bunch of them sacrifice themselves to turn into like a single drop of water, mm-hmm. and the guy's mm-hmm. explaining it to another guy who's like not interested. Right, right. And he's like, mm-hmm. "What? What do you think that means?" Like, I don't care. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> right, right. Like, isn't that interesting that ants are willing to do that? He's like, "Willing to? Uh, yeah, I don't, look, I don't want to talk to you right now." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's like, oh, th- he's like one guy's like trying to have a, it's like the end of the world, and he's like the, the guy's just like, "I don't really want to talk about this." Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, the, yeah. The way that the book ends is, uh, yeah. I mean, I was I was kind of surprised because it was. It, I mean, it was a lot more of a sort of downer than I than than I remembered. Uh, but you know, still not not as much of a downer as you would expect from a from a book about the end of the world. But but yeah. So it so it ends on a somewhat bleak note. But um, I think probably the most interesting thing that is throughout the book is this Bokaninist religion and the way in which it's sort of um, talked about and the underlying sort of ideas of it. Like one thing is that, so the Bokaninist religion is actually outlawed. It's, it's illegal to be a Bokaninist in San Lorenzo. However, pretty much everybody is, <laughs> including the president. Um, and it turns out that, yeah, the founder, Bokanon, one like he he intentionally wanted the religion to be outlawed so that it would be more popular and so so that's that's like one of the one of the things about it. That's know. what happened in Bioshock. Oh yeah, yeah. In Rapture. Uh huh. It's a, Did you play Bioshock? No, no. It's like a uh, a guy was like, I'm gonna build a city underwater. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know. He just wanted to. And uh, it's like I'm only going to invite the elite of the elite, artists, right. poets of the world. Yeah. And, you know, and you know, as once it's done, people are like, you know, you need someone to like clean and like do pipe mm-hmm. work and stuff and all you brought in is like people who don't do that mm-hmm. um so it becomes mm-hmm. like an issue but um i lost track of what i was what were we talking about talking about outlawing religion oh yeah he's like yeah. i don't want religion it's just all science yeah mm-hmm. and so he outlaws religion so right. it becomes like naughty to be a christian right right and so he mm-hmm. and you know he's like he's like killing them if they are caught so he's making martyrs out of it uh-huh. and so it just encourages them to become more and more religious there you go and yeah, and yeah. then you if you eat a slug you can shoot lightning it's it that's yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> also cool. you, yeah you can shoot like fireballs and stuff but right like, yeah. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well yeah um so I mean it's I mean it's interesting because yeah you don't get but so much a sense of a lot of the main beliefs of the religion but uh, you see sort of the way the the effect that um, religion has on on some of the people and I, I mean one thing I liked was yeah the first time that the um, that the narrator meets with 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 the uh, the woman uh, that he's going to marry um, she said like like he's sort of shy and, and nervous and then she says um, it is impossible to make mistakes 
It, or it, yeah, it is impossible to make a mistake. And that's like a, a signature Bokaninist greeting that you give to a shy person. Mm, which is neat. And that's, that's, that, that's nice, I think. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, the, there's no way you can make a mistake here. You know, that's, that's uh, yeah, so that's, that's one sort of cool uh, belief of it. Um, it's also interesting because there's a part where um, the narrator and then like the people that are from Indiana that are obsessed with being from Indiana, they go to this hotel and it's the only hotel in San Lorenzo and uh, the, the, uh, the, the husband of the, of the couple goes and talks to the guy who's, who's doing this big painting in the, in the hotel and he and he's totally put off by this guy because this guy just like talks in this totally cryptic way, and like he like uh, uh, basically like turns around anything that that, that the guy says, and, uh, and and the guy just like just like totally totally hates him. Um, and uh, it turns out that the that the guy he was talking to actually owns the hotel, so <laughs> so he can't actually do anything to like get the guy fired or anything. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how, yeah, you can sort of see how the Bokanas religion gives people a different, a different sort of perspective on things than the than the usual perspective, um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, it it, mm-hmm. it it overall it's like a nice like, you you kind of learn a little bit of you get like a little like fun like perspective on science stuff, right? Mm-hmm. It's like there's like some satire happening, right? And there is like I'm like oh that's that, that is neat to like mm-hmm. think about. Right, right, and so yeah, that's like I'm like yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't work. You know, right, I'm right. still going to be shy, but like, <laughs> sure, sure. You know, it, yeah, it, yeah. that's like oh yeah, that's like if you told someone that, it would probably like tell mm-hmm, them when, mm-hmm. tell them when they're younger. Right, right. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, th- was there like a an ice nine tornado? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, that part of the plot was was a little uh, unclear, but yeah, basically, yeah, once the ice nine turns all of the oceans into into ice um that basically causes the weather phenomenon of of tornadoes um yeah that that part is not expe- especially spelled out that clearly and i will say that yeah i mean i mean the way that the novel ends is a little abrupt Ba-da-ba-ba-da-da. yeah a- <laughs> and and a little uh, yeah it's I, I mean not certainly not totally satisfying um but I mean, what I what what I like about about the book most of all, I think, is actually sort of the way it kind of begins and stuff. Because it, I mean, it begins in a very sort of um, unique way. Because I mean, it sort of begins like a detective story, but a very low stakes detective story where it's it's just sort of meandering. Um, you know, it's like okay, um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. There's not like a sort of driving plot here, and yet. I'm interested in sort of the kind of like episodic nature of, of the way things are going on. And yeah, and I mean, and it's, it's, I mean, it's hard to describe without just, you know, saying, yeah, you know, go out and actually start, start reading it and see if, see if you, if you'd like it. But, you know, it's, it's a very, it's a very unique style that, uh, yeah, if it, if it's something that you're into, it's very, uh, infectious, I think. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nobody, you know, there's nobody else that writes quite like Kurt Vonnegut. I mean, there are people that, I think, try to imitate his style, um, but you know, I think I think his style is very very unique. And I, I mean, whether it's this book or or any of his of his other novels, you can sort of like immediately tell within a paragraph or two. Okay, yeah, this is this is Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, it's it's funny, but but it's not like you know necessarily like jokey funny but it's it's sort of just like you know isn't isn't humanity weird mm-hmm. sort of funny you know yeah. that kind of yeah it, yeah it is it is and it's like he had a very interesting tragic life so yeah. it, it, it's mm-hmm. so like i found that out afterwards mm-hmm. you know anyway mm-hmm. so like it's so interesting how he wrote like a, a gentle satire right humor of like you ever think about that i'm like no mm-hmm. i didn't i'm like you did you wouldn't you in the pow that's crazy right and you know it's i'm like yeah i'm like that was i'm like you got like a person you got someone's perspective on life mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is one of the cool parts about books yeah one of the cool parts about podcasting indeed indeed <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no i'm i'm, I'm happy I, I checked it out I, good uh, good glad to hear it yeah, it, it yeah. was a thing where i'm like ah yes i have not tried learning in a long time <laughs> i have not had to learn in a while 
Yeah. yeah. Let me let me get back into that mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm, I I kept being surprised because I kept thinking like, oh, am I am I gonna be able to finish this? I'm like, yeah, right. no, you, oh yeah, I'm almost done. I didn't realize I got that far. Oh yeah, yeah, no, very. Very breezy, uh, easy to easy to get through. I think, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and then you know the world ends in ice. Isn't that like a? Isn't that some That's, quote uh, like this? Uh, is uh, Robert Frost. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is he actually the guy that said that? <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was just, maybe he was just doing like a joke. Wait, 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 no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The poem is uh, "Fire and Ice." Yes, mm. some say the world w- will end in fire. Some say in ice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. But obviously, for him, it's going to be ice. <laughs> Robert Frost, right? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. You're I'm learning new stuff. Every <laughs> yeah, it, it, for, yeah. Do you do you want to like talk about that ending, which is like, like the the uh, the uh, very ending? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so so the very ending of the book. Um, yeah, they're driving through the frozen wasteland of the world and and he does finally uh see Bokanon himself uh yeah who is this figure that like has just been like in hiding in the in the woods and basically the government of San Lorenzo like officially has is wants wants to hunt down Bokanon he's he's like you know criminal number one who has founded this illegal religion and 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 they have this hook yeah 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 there's this big, oh i forgot it. yeah that. yeah 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 there's this big hook on the presidential palace and it says like this is reserved for bokana <laughs> you know we're gonna put him on this hook oh yeah let's yeah. i, I mm-hmm. want to talk about that hook real quick yeah yeah, yeah. which is like mm-hmm. okay, there's no crime here mm-hmm. but when there mm-hmm. is yeah. uh <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the reason there's very little crime here yeah, is yeah. we we put you on a hook right through like your gut Mm-hmm. And then you mm-hmm. just you just like it's like crucifixion, but, but like a hook, right, right. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, no, I would not commit crime, yeah. Because it's like, and it's it's for anything, right, right, yeah. It's yeah. any crime. Mm-hmm. We have one punishment, and that's right, the hook. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which is like that was that was an interesting section. Yeah. yeah um, but then they got one just for Bacon, but B- B- Bokanon. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "How should I end my book?" Right. Yeah, and so. Yeah, yeah. So the narrator finally encounters Bokanon. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and Bokanon is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how I how I should end the the books of Bokanon, and then he says, well, yeah, I think maybe I if yeah if I just go up go up onto the uh, top of the highest mountain in uh, San Lorenzo, and I'll be thumbing my nose at you know who, uh, and uh, yeah, and so that's. That's how the book ends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Either what? Yeah. I was like, oh, it's over. I was like, oh, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm like, I feel like kind of disappointed, but like not like really. I don't. It's like I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. It was. It was like, oh, I didn't know what I thought was going to happen. Right. Um. I don't know if disappointed is the right word, but I was like, oh, it's just oh, oh it's over now. You know, it's interesting. I mean, there are some books where like they end in a cool way. And and it like makes up for maybe some sort of you know boring or slow parts because it because it leads up to that ending. Alloy of law. Yeah, alloy of law. Mistborn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another book I haven't read. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you go. Uh, okay, I will. <laughs> uh, but this book is sort of like the opposite of that. This is book is like, okay, okay, it's cool at the beginning and the, and then in the middle and then it sort of like peters out at the end, but. Yeah, but it's but it's like hopefully you feel okay about it because like well well yeah but that other part was fun so you know yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah I'm not I wasn't like what the yeah yeah what the mm-hmm. heck yeah uh, I wa- I was like you know I was like oh it's a oh book's done all right yeah mm-hmm. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. review it because I don't really like doing that but like yeah. right right um, mm-hmm. usually honestly after every book on audio as soon as you finish a book they're like what do you rate it and I'm like oh I wasn't ready to do that yet uh, right <laughs> no I yeah I need to. Process. This, I need to right. know yeah, if I'm yeah. mad or not. Like that actually takes me a while. <laughs> right. Right. Um, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like, yeah, that was good. Mm-hmm. I don't really know anything like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's a pretty unique style. Yeah. I mean, once you, once you encounter it, yeah, maybe you can see some other other influences. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if you. I mean, if you like Cat's Cradle, or yeah. I mean, if. I mean, if you want to read other things like it, yeah. I mean, obviously there are other. 
great books by Kurt Vonnegut. I mean, definitely, yeah, Slaughterhouse Five, uh, The Sirens of Titan. Those are two more science fictiony type books that are that are like this one. Yeah. With movies that you can pretend you read the book. So mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, yeah. In the case of Slaughterhouse Five, yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, Sirens of Titan is one that maybe we should do just because it's Titan. That's a moon of Saturn. Our podcast is live from Saturn. Stay, uh, we're j- literally we're going to do it just for that. All right. So All right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, how far are they going to take this bit? As far as we can. We're going to do Attack on Titan. That's we're right. going to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look up the other moons. We're going to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Saturn Rings. Saturn has a ring around it, right? It does. Yeah, I'm not yeah. that into... I'm Genuinely, I'm not really sure what Saturn looks like. Yeah, no, it's the, it's the one with the big ring. Okay, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. We're going to do a... Yeah. yeah. I have nothing else to, to say. Uh, okay. Except something that I keep forgetting. What are we going to do next week, Duncan? Uh, yes, next week we're going to be covering a book called... The Time Machine Did It by, by John, John Schwartzwelder. Schwartzwelder. Yeah. Um, this book is kind of hard to find. You can mm-hmm. find I've got it on Amazon. Took about two weeks to get to me. Where did you get your copy? I also got it from Amazon. Yeah, this is not this is not available as an audio book. Is that right? No. In fact, yeah. I've, one yeah. of my side projects, I am typing it out so I can enter into a text to speech thing, so I can like, <laughs> so I can just listen to it because I actually this I read it because it's the only option. But I actually don't like reading books, mm. so um, I'm like. Yeah, it's uh, I'm doing it for fun, and also so I can like hand it out. To, not that I'm going to profit off. Ignore everything I just said, Duncan. How are we leaving? All right. So uh, yeah, live by the uh, FOMA that uh, make you happy and healthy from the uh, books of Bokanon. Get the FOMA. Don't get the FOMO. FOMA not FOMO. FOMO not FOMO. Here. Okay. Bye.